Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on another episode of Common Design Mistakes. We are talking about accent walls. Now if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you'll know exactly how I feel about accent walls. I don't like them. I don't like them, I don't do them, I don't even call them accent walls. So if you're wondering whether or not an accent wall will work in your space, or if you currently have one already installed, watch this video for all of my do's and don'ts and top tips when it comes to accent walls. Let's start with the number one question on everyone's minds. Why don't I like accent walls? Well, for starters, an accent wall typically takes up the entire expanse of one wall in your home. To me, that's considered a focus. A focal point, a focal wall, whatever you want to call it, it shouldn't be considered an accent because an accent seems like an afterthought. Which comes to my first huge tip for accent walls, be intentional with the focus of the room. Ask yourself this key question, why is it that you want an accent wall? Is it to highlight the furniture and finishes that are currently in the space? Is it because you have one huge white wall in the room and you don't know what to do with it? Do determine which wall is going to become the focus of the room and definitely prioritize this main feature wall before you embark at the entire room's design. Do consider a square or rectangular wall to become the main feature of your space. Accent walls don't work well in a room with sloped ceilings, slanted walls, irregular shapes, weird cutouts, niches, and alcoves. Since this wall becomes a feature of the space, you want to look for a wall that's fairly typical. You need somewhere for your finish, your texture, or your paint color to begin and end. Doing so will allow the finish a clear starting and ending point. Don't create an accent wall on a wall with tons of windows, doors, or cutouts. You want that visual elevation to read as one expanse of space. You don't want to distract the eyes and your feature wall with all of these different cutouts, niches, windows, doors. I mean, it really just breaks up that elevation and defeats the whole purpose. Another common design mistake I see when it comes to accent walls is choosing the color last. You want to choose a color, texture, or finish based on the items that are already in the space. That is my number one paint tip. Paint is the easiest finish for you to customize and it's also the least expensive. In order to create a really cohesive color palette and a really beautifully put together room, you want to pull colors from your artwork, accessories, or area rug to be placed on the wall. In this case, choosing a color is really simple. You can pull that specific color from the accessories or you can pull a tone or tint of that color and place it on that feature wall. Although paint is the least expensive way for you to feature a wall in a space, there are so many more options out there. You can choose a natural texture like brick or stone, or if you have a really green thumb, try a living wall. I personally love how wallpaper really adds so much visual interest to a room. What I don't love is when I see people slap a pattern paper on one side of the wall, leave the entire three walls and the ceiling unaddressed, and it's simply just a plain white. What you want to do is look for a tonal color that coordinates with that pattern or colored wallpaper and paint those three walls and the ceiling in that tone instead. Nothing feels more basic, boring, or unintentional like a blank white ceiling. So never neglect the fifth wall in design, which is a ceiling. Do wear your designer's hat and plan out the space very, very well. This is especially true if you're going for a wood paneled look. The success of a wood paneled feature wall has everything to do with symmetry. You wanna make sure that your grid is clearly defined and that it's symmetrical from square to square. Unless you're going for an asymmetrical graphic look, in this case, you might have wood paneling that displays in all different directions, shapes, and sizes. Unless you're designing it as you're installing it on the walls, in this case, it could look like an after-school project gone wrong. Do place this accent wall where you'll see it most. 
Accent walls and feature walls look amazing in living rooms and bedrooms. The reason being is that there are clear focal points to play with. In the living room, the focal point of the space might be the fireplace, or it could be the wall behind the main seating group in the space. In the bedroom, the feature wall is clearly the wall behind the bed. Don't paint an accent wall in the bathroom because bathrooms are already small enough as it is. Once you break it up with a feature wall or an accent wall, especially in a contrasting color or texture, you've automatically reduced that size of the bathroom just by a contrasting wall. Don't install an accent wall in the kitchen. There's so much happening in the kitchen, especially when all of your appliances and fixtures are on different walls in the space. You might have a huge range hood on one wall, a really beautiful window with a sink underneath on another wall. There might be an island in the middle with a really beautiful pendant lamp or overhead light fixture. The entire idea behind a feature wall is to draw focus onto one wall in the space. When there are so many elements working together to help beautify a kitchen, you don't want to distract the viewer away from the big picture. And the most common design mistake I see when it comes to accent walls is calling it an accent wall. I'm going to go out on a limb here and blame HGTV for this specific point. Don't call it an accent wall. An accent, by definition, is used to highlight or draw focus to something else that's in the room. Now, when this accent takes up an entire wall of space in a room, it becomes a feature. So I definitely want to encourage you to call it a feature wall or a focal wall, unless, of course, it really is just a simple accent. A feature happening behind bookshelves in your room, a small little highlight that's drawing attention to your fireplace, an accent tile that's backing your range or your stove, or a beautiful wallpaper that's lining a niche. Always be very intentional with the design of your space. Consider whether or not you're emphasizing the entire expanse of a space, or if you're highlighting just key minor details of the room. Remember that accent walls are small and feature walls are expansive. That's it for this latest episode of Common Design Mistakes for Accent Walls. What did you think of my tips? Do you agree or disagree? Do you currently have an accent wall in your space that you feel is such a successful design that you want to share with our viewers? Definitely let me know in the comments below. I have a ton of other common design mistakes videos on the channel now. I'll link the playlist for you in the description box below. We've got common design mistakes for kitchens, bedrooms, living rooms, dining rooms, kid rooms. What other rooms do you want me to tackle next? If you like this video and you want to see more from the Common Design Mistakes series, please give this video a thumbs up. Share this video and the series with anyone you know embarking on a new design. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next week.